Hi, this is a lesson on patterns in multiplication using decimal numbers, and it goes with Go Math Lesson 4.1 for fifth grade. And we have a learning intention, and that is that you, the students, will be able to place the decimal in the product. All right, that's the whole lesson. And how are you going to do that? You're going to move the decimal the correct number of spaces. So this lesson is all about knowing how many spaces to move a decimal uh, to be successful. You're going to be able to place the decimal in the product. You'll be able to know where it goes. And when there's a whole number with no decimal, you'll know where to put the decimal onto that whole number in order to move it. And then if you can do similar problems at a 90% accuracy rate, you're going to be successful. All right, here's the skills you're going to need. You're going to need to know place value. Uh, so if I'm referring to the tenths or the hundredths uh, and so on, you know where I'm uh, pointing and what I'm talking about. And there's a couple of vocabulary words. One is exponent. So if I am talking about the exponent being a 1 or a 2 or a 0, you need to know um, to which digit I'm referring. And then powers of 10, you'll hear me say that uh, often. And that's just multiplying by 10 or 100 or 1,000 or multiplying by 1 tenth, 1 hundredth, or 1 1 thousandth. All right, moving on, there are some notes for this lesson. So... You can pause the video and uh, write them down. All right, moving on. Here's uh, some problem, practice problems we're going to be doing. And I'm working off of the fifth grade Go Math textbook, page 163. And we're going to do problems one through three, even though I've titled them A, B, and C. All right, so here's the first problem. And it's 3.19 times 1, or 1 times 3.19. And you can see that 3.19 is being multiplied several times. One time by the one, then by the ten, by the hundred, and by the thousand. And this is what I mean by powers of ten. And so when I see powers of ten, I'm going to be multiplying, or excuse me, moving the decimal to the right. So the decimal was there, and if I need to move it to the right, I'm just going to be moving it spaces or decimal places uh, as we go. All right, so the first thing is the one times 3.19, and you should know by now that anything times 1 is itself. So 3.19 times 1 is 3.19. Here's when we get into moving the decimal. All right, I have 1 power of 10, and I know that because I have 1 zero. All right, and if I have 1 power of 10, I'm going to move to the right one space with the decimal. So it was between the 3 and the 1. If I move it one space to the right, it is now in between the 1 and the 9. So if I copy down the number, it goes 3, 1, then the point, and then 9. 3, 1, point, 9. All right, so the decimal is moved one space over because it's 1 power of 10. All right, moving on, we got 2 powers of 10. We got 1, 2 zeros. That tells you 2 powers of 10. And so if it's 2 powers of 10, I'm moving to the right two spaces. So it was between the 1 and the 3, or the 3 and the 1. I move it over one space for 1 power of 10, but I have two zeros, so that means 2 powers of 10. I have to move it two spaces, place the decimal, so it goes 3, 1, 9, point. Point. Uh, all right, third problem in this particular example, I have three zeros now. That means I have three powers of 10, like 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And so that uh, is three powers of 10. If I have three powers of 10, I'm moving to the right one, two, three spaces. Now there's a kind of an empty spot here, right? What do you do with that spot? Well, you put a zero there, right? Any void in, there, uh, in your number, you can add a zero. So copying it down, it's three, one, nine, zero, then the decimal point. 3, 1, 9, 0 with the decimal point. Now, you mathematicians are saying, well, if it's at the end of a number, uh, Mr. Ahama, you don't have to put the decimal point on there. And you're correct. You can leave that decimal point off when it's at the end of a whole number. But you can't leave it off here because it's separating the whole numbers from this a tenth. Okay, so uh, I just put it in there anyway. It's not incorrect. It just shows me the pattern. Do you see how it moved uh, to the right? one space each time because I was multiplying by one more power of 10 each time. All right, moving on, we have 45.6, and that number is being multiplied by 10 to the zero power, 10 to the first, 10 to the second, and 10 to the third power. We can also 
see these exponents as 0 powers of 10, 1 power of 10, because 10 is the base number, 2 powers of 10, and 3 powers of 10. Right? So if I'm multiplying by powers of 10, I'm moving the decimal to the right, but how many spaces? Well, the exponent tells you how many spaces. So if it's a 0, I'm going to move it 0 spaces. I'm talking about the decimal now. So I'm going to leave the decimal in between the 5 and the 6 and copy down the number 4, 5.6. Now, here's a side lesson. Anything to the zero power equals one. So when you see the zero power, you have to train your brain to say that equals one. Now, moving on, I have 10 to the first power or one power of 10. So if I have a power of 10, I'm moving the decimal place to the right. And the exponent tells me how many powers of 10 there are. So I'm going to move it however many um, the decimal says. So the decimal says one. And I'm going to take the decimal now and move it one space to the right because the decimal tells me how many spaces to move it. And then put the decimal uh, at the end of the number now. So copying it down, it's 4, 5, 6, point. Moving on to the next problem. I have a decimal of, or an exponent of 2. So I'm going to move the decimal two spaces, one space two spaces, and what do I put in the void there, or the empty spot, a zero. So copying it down, it goes four, five, six, zero, then the decimal point. All right, moving on then, I have a def or an exponent of three, and in that situation, I'm, I'm going to be moving the decimal three spaces to the right because it's three powers of 10. So one space for one power of 10, two spaces for two powers of 10, then three spaces, and now it's getting kind of messy here, but I can still see it, right? So what do I need in those empty spaces? Zeros, All right? So it goes four, five, zero, 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 point. Four, five, six, zero, zero, point. So copying down four, five, six, zero, zero, with the point after that. All right, so if I'm multiplying by powers of 10, I'm moving it to the right. If I see zeros, I'm moving it uh, the number of zeros to the right, one zero, one space, two zeros, two spaces, and so on. If I see exponents, the exponent tells me how many places moving the decimal to the right. All right, so sometimes you don't move it to the right. Sometimes you move it to the left, I'm talking about the decimal again. Uh, and so when you see that you're multiplying by fractions, that's one-tenth or one one-hundredth, you're going to move the decimal to the left this time. All right, so I see that there's a decimal there, and I see that there's a decimal there, so I'm multiplying by fractions, I'm moving the decimal to the left, but when you look at the other number, there is no decimal. So where does it go? The decimal always goes next to the ones place, to the right of the ones place. So I'm gonna put it in there. In fact, I'm gonna put it in there on all these numbers. So it goes six, three, nine, one with the decimal, six, three, nine, one with the decimal, and again, it's next to the ones place, and so on. So I should know by now that anything times one is itself. So I'm going to copy that down. Six, three, nine, one, with the decimal point there. Moving on, I see that I'm multiplying by a fraction. I'm going to take that decimal and move it to the left, but how many spaces? Here's what tells you. Not that. Get out of there, buddy. Here's what tells you. If there's one decimal space, you're going to move the decimal one to the left. And by decimal spaces, I mean how many digits are there on the right side of the decimal? So I have one there. I'm going to take the decimal and move it to the left one space. And so now the decimal is in between the nine and the one. So copying it down, it goes six, three, nine, point, one. And this number I'm multiplying, or this um, has two decimal places. So I'm going to take that decimal and move it one two spaces and put it in between the six, I mean, it's in between the three and the nine. So copying it down, it goes six, three point ninety one. So when you're multiplying by a fraction, you're moving the decimal to the left and you're counting the decimal spaces or places in order to move, or in order to know how many places to move. Here's a couple things to watch out for. A lot of people think that 10 to the zero power equals zero. It does not equal zero. 
in fact, 10 to the 0 power or anything to the 0 power, as we've already learned, equals 1. All right, so you got to train your brain for that one. And then 10 to the first power, a lot of people think that equals 1 when it does not. That's 1 power of 10, so that uh, equals 10. 10 to the first power equals 10. So your task today is to work on page uh, 163 to do 10 problems with 90% accuracy. I already did the first three problems, so you can't choose those. And good luck.